Um, yes, it was a big package. It, it, it uh, sizably more so than what we got during Lehman Brothers, um, which in many ways was much more disturbing than this. I think it's just, you know, we, you talk about fear of the unknown. Well, we've never had a virus um, or anything really shut down every economy in the world so abruptly. I don't think there's a single economy that's truly immune to the um, to the virus. And and, and, that, and I think that's what's, uh, you know, you know whether you're a policymaker or a market participant, you're trying to sort of process here is, is how that how that really works. I mean, fortunately, systemic risks are in a very different place now um, than they were in 2007, 2008. But, um, you know, we've never, like, you know, frantically, it's like... It's, Economy is one computer, and you just sort of push the off button, and then we're seeing how the reboot process happens um, on this massive supercomputer, and we've never done that before. And, and uh, I think it's very important that we watch how how successfully um, the Asian economies um, uh, reboot, if you will, uh, uh, right now as people get back to work there and, and how those are starting to function. Only a few seconds left here. Is there any way to say when that reboot could happen in the U.S.? Um, well, I, I think, you know, you're going to start have to start looking towards uh, policymakers, meaning health policymakers, mm. um, uh, get back, uh, sort of give, um, you know, some sort of uh, uh, pale green light to people to start um, undoing some of these restrictions on their uh, day-to-day lives. I think that's mm. going to be really key. And then you're going to have this avalanche of, of fiscal um, and monetary policy right. um, there. Thank you so much, Michael. Good talking with you this morning. Michael Purvis, the CEO of Tallbach and Capital Advisors. Limit down for U.S. futures contracts. S&P futures down 92 points now. Dow futures down 821. NASDAQ futures lower by 328 points. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stock futures slid today, hitting their limit down and preventing further losses as investors assess the Trump administration's beefed-up policy response to the coronavirus. One portfolio manager said traders are in a murky environment where people don't know how to factor in the virus. Stocks rallied yesterday with the broader market up 6% on news that the White House was moving toward a big fiscal stimulus package. NYMEX crude oil continues to slump, down more than 3% again this morning and hovering around $26 a barrel after its lowest settlement since 2003. The planned stimulus could amount to $1.2 trillion with $1,000 checks going out to Americans in two weeks. President Trump is also considering allowing some Americans to delay their mortgage payments. More and more of the nation's biggest department store chains are shutting down their physical stores for now. Macy's and Bloomingdale's, which are owned by the same company, along with Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom, making the announcements. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Elite advisory firms were rely on BNY Mellon's Pershing to meet the needs of their most complex clients. Karen Novak, Chief Operating Officer at Pershing Advisor Solutions, explains how. At BNY Mellon's Pershing, we bring customized insights and strategies to help you grow your advisory business and stay on the leading edge. We can support the needs of your most sophisticated clients with a full range of investment and wealth management solutions from access to private banking to consolidated bank and brokerage custody. Learn why so many of the largest advisory firms turn to us for the financial strength and high-touch service that BNY Mellon's Pershing can provide. Are you well-positioned to stand out from your competition? Learn more at Pershing.com or call 800-445-4467. Brokerage custody provided by Pershing LLC and other services provided by Pershing Advisor Solutions LLC. Both members of FINRA and SIPC. Private banking and bank custody provided by BNY Mellon NA. Member FDIC. Message and data rates may apply. TNC and privacy terms can be found at bevel.com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to... You love tune in for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on-demand news shows. On tune in. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on tune in.
Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. It's for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. Hey y'all, Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always B-Y-O-B. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So for the love of the outdoors, go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Are you interested in a challenging and exciting career? One where you can be part of solving complex challenges across industries and geographies. Bloomberg's ever-expanding technology, data, news, and media services foster innovation, empower clients, and offer nearly limitless opportunities for career growth. Visit Bloomberg.com slash careers today to view our current job opportunities. Bloomberg LP is an equal opportunity employer. The address once again is Bloomberg.com slash careers. Experts like to be part of Bloomberg Surveillance. What does the new Europe look like? For the same reason, we're recommending it to you. Everything you thought would happen is happening. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130. To Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991. To Boston. Bloomberg 1061. To San Francisco. Bloomberg 960. To the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe. The Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And it's 5.30 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by BNY Mellon's Pershing. Learn why the world's most sophisticated advisory firms and broker dealers rely on Pershing to help them improve profitability, create efficiency, attract talent, and manage risk at Pershing.com. And we are just about four hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. U.S. futures have hit limit down levels as volatility remains sky high. Excitement over stimulus from the White House appears to be fading despite the promise of big spending. It's going to be big and it's going to be bold. And the uh, level, again, of enthusiasm to get something done, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. President Trump is pushing for more than a trillion dollars in stimulus to blunt the economic fallout from the virus. As part of the plan, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin wants to send payments of $1,000 directly to Americans. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants. Americans need cash now, and the president wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. Mnuchin warns without big spending, the U.S. unemployment rate could climb to 20 percent. Meantime, in Europe, we're seeing signs that governments may band together to stem the fallout from the outbreak. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Maria Tadeo in Brussels. Your area leaders are considering now issuing joint debt on the fact that Angela Merkel is now saying, look, I'm not just going to rule it out completely. Let's explore it as actually a game changer. It's huge for Europe. This was always a red line. They have not been in favor of more risk sharing. The fact that Angela Merkel is not ruling this out now really shows you that, A, this situation is probably very serious. You're not just looking at a recession, but probably a very deep, long recession for Europe. And then two, that no single country is going to be able to deal with it by itself. And there are now more than 30,000 infections in Italy. Spain is more than 10,000. France and Germany have about 8,000 each. Back here in the U.S., deaths from the coronavirus have eclipsed 100, while infections climb past 5,800. Retailers from Neiman Marcus to Bergdorf Goodman are closing stores. Nevada's governor is shutting all Las Vegas casinos. Worldwide cases of the coronavirus are now approaching 200,000. 
And futures are lower, as we said this morning. S&P futures down 92 points. Dow futures down 821. And NASDAQ futures down 328. Ten-year Treasury down 1 and 6.30 seconds. Yield 1.20%. Yield on the two-year, 0.50%. 30 percent the euro 1.0997 against the dollar british pound 1.1994 straight ahead we have the latest world and national news and this okay thank you karen it is 5:33 on wall street and time to bring in michael barr to get a check of what else is going on around the world michael good morning good morning nathan new york city mayor bill de blasio insists a shelter in place order is still an option in light of the coronavirus I believe that decision should be made in the next 48 hours, and it's a very, very difficult decision. However, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed back on that idea. My job is to make sure that the state has a coordinated plan and it works everywhere. Uh, I don't think shelter in place uh, really works for one locality. I'm a New York City boy, um, born and raised, if you can't tell. And uh, we're very good at getting around the rules. You know, you say shelter in place if if you stay in New York City. I'll go stay with my sister in Westchester, right? I'll go stay with a buddy in in the neighboring suburb of Nassau. Well, de Blasio said he would coordinate with the state. Cuomo says that he alone has the authority to order shelters in place and has no plans to do so. An NYPD officer is tested positive for COVID-19, and 17 of his colleagues are ill in relation to the virus. Department officials say the officers are out of the first precinct. So far, the number of cases of coronavirus in New York City is at 923 with 10 deaths. In New Jersey, there are 267 cases with three deaths. With the coronavirus spreading at an alarming rate, California is preparing to deal with worst-case scenarios that could overwhelm hospitals and drain the state's spending reserves. Governor Gavin Newsom says that he is putting the California National Guard on alert for duties such as ensuring food distribution. Former Vice President Joe Biden won all three Democratic primaries up for grabs yesterday. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. Biden's nomination of the race in South Carolina has put him in a glide path to the nomination. It puts Bernie Sanders in a huge mathematical hole to even think about getting enough delegates to win. As impressive as a sweep is the margin by which Biden won in Florida with nearly triple the votes and Illinois with almost double. Arizona, a double-digit lead. Biden talking unity now. Let me say especially to the young voters who have been inspired by Senator Sanders, I hear you. I know what's at stake. I know what we have to do. Biden says he needs to unify the party to beat Donald Trump and unify the country. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. It's 535 on Wall Street. It's time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. Nathan, it is going to be a very strange sight. Tom Brady, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform after 20 years in New England, quarterbacking a dynasty. Played in nine Super Bowls, won six. Won 17 division titles. Now he's going to the Bucks. Now look at the overall records of the 32 NFL teams finds Tampa Bay last. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2007, but they needed a QB. Having moved on from Jameis Winston, their coach Bruce Arians, well regarded. They've got good receivers. Now we're going to learn something that has fascinated people for years. Can Brady win without Bill Belichick? Can Belichick win without Brady? The only QB the Pats have now is Jared Stidham, a backup last year as a rookie. They'll likely need someone else. Winston's available. So, too, is Cam Newton. The Panthers have told the 2015 NFL MVP to seek a trade. They're about to finalize a deal with free agent QB Teddy Bridgewater. Phillip Rivers, a charger for 16 years, now going to Indianapolis. The Jets re-signed free agent guard Alex Lewis. Word is the Giants' pursuit of free agent pass rusher Jadavian Clowney has ended. Four Brooklyn Nets players tested positive for coronavirus. The only one identified, Kevin Durant, who told the Athletic he feels fine. Three of the four not showing symptoms. No word of any Knicks with the virus. They played recent games against both Utah and Detroit, who both have players with it. The first known NHL player to test positive plays for Ottawa. Second Yankee minor leaguer tested positive. Not known if, like the first, he did not have any contact with the major league players. With Bloomberg, NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stash Nathan. All right, thank you, John. It's 537 on Wall Street, and the latest edition of Bloomberg Business Week is on newsstands now. It is devoted entirely to the coronavirus. Jim Ellis contributed to the special issue of Bloomberg Business Week. 
this is something that affects every business and everything in business. And so when we thought about what could we do, we sort of divided up and uh, decided we were going to look at some companies that were actually dealing with this, some industries that found themselves in a position where they couldn't stop and they, they have to go on with business as usual, even though this is not usual. You can read more about this and other stories in this coronavirus edition of Bloomberg Business Week on newsstands now and online at businessweek.com and terminal customers can get a complimentary subscription at MAG Go. Listen to Business Week with Carol Masser and Jason Kelly right here on Bloomberg Radio or watch it on YouTube weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. Wall Street time. Get global business, finance, and tech news on your TV, computer, or mobile device at youtube.com. Search Bloomberg Global News. At 538 on Wall Street, we check in with Bloomberg's Ed Corey for the Tri-State Business Report. Ed, good morning. Well, Nathan, in New York City, the virtual shutdown for the coronavirus pandemic is threatening to create massive holes in the state budget. Billions of dollars in tax revenue is disappearing. Comptroller Scott Stringer says the city could conservatively lose $3.2 billion over the next six months, and most agencies should brace for cuts. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy has ordered the indefinite closure of all indoor portions of retail shopping malls and all indoor and outdoor places of public amusement. Casino gaming floors, racetracks, gyms, and entertainment centers have already been closed because of the coronavirus. The owner of Connecticut Sportsplex in North Branford is planning layoffs because of the virus, and he thinks state lawmakers should suspend a recent minimum wage increase. That's your Bloomberg Tri-State Business Report. I'm Ed Corey. Nathan? Thanks, Ed. 539 on Wall Street. Bloomberg Radio is on the air from San Francisco to New York, London to Hong Kong. Let's check in with our global news team for some of the top stories heard on our 300 affiliate radio stations around the world. I'm Gina Cervetti, and on WFLA in Orlando, I'm reporting that Hilton plans to close most of its hotels in major U.S. cities, and Marriott has begun to furlough hotel staff. I'm Roger Hearing on Bloomberg DAB Digital Radio in London. We're reporting on the UK Chancellor's antivirus boost for business. I'm Jeff Bellinger, and on WIOD in Miami, I'm reporting a government study found that food service workers aboard the Diamond Princess helped to spread the coronavirus on the cruise ship. I'm Ed Corey on WWJ in Detroit. I'm reporting automakers have agreed to a rotating partial shutdown of plants. Those are some of the stories. Our 2,700 Bloomberg journalist and analyst are working on this morning around the world. Some other stories we're following. FedEx is the latest company to suspend financial forecasts as the outbreak makes it difficult to predict demand. Still, the shipper is starting to see a cargo rebound in China. It says about 95% of large manufacturers have returned to operations there. And deeper cuts are on the way at United Airlines. It is slashing international flights by 85% next month. Cutting flights across the U.S. and Canada by 42%. It says the drop in demand could be worse than after 9-11. Futures are limit down this morning. S&P futures lower by 92 points. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. 25 years ago, NJIT graduate Dick Sweeney co-founded Keurig Green Mountain, a company whose incredible innovations changed the way the world brews a cup of coffee. Today, he lectures widely on business leadership and is a strong advocate for NJIT's work to combine business education with the power of STEM. NJIT is definitely fostering the innovative thinking for budding entrepreneurs simply because that's the world we live in. NJIT is producing students that have been trained, educated, and given the business acumen to be a contributor to a company. The distinct mission is to develop great STEM scholars. The attributes I've always looked for in team members are heart, smarts, guts, and luck. So we want people with passion, intelligence, courage, and never discount luck. The student coming out of NJIT has uh, has experienced all of that. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. 
Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SEI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. This is your... Leave it to the New York Times to make the most intelligent pop music podcast out there. Welcome to the New York Times Popcast. On the Popcast, the Times music staff gets together for a weekly roundtable on the hottest topics in popular music. From award show autopsies and reactions to new releases to difficult to process scandals and emerging themes in the music landscape, hear distinguished music critics share their perspectives on the latest music news, songs, albums, and artists of note on the New York Times Popcast. Search and favorite Popcast to join the conversation. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Like what you're listening to? Want to make getting back to it easier? Use the favorite button to keep track of the stations and podcasts you love on TuneIn. Just tap or click the heart icon to add it to your favorites. Then find all your go-to audio under the favorites tab. Pretty easy, right? Evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. IBKR is the professional's gateway to the world's markets. IBKR offers commissions starting at $0 for U.S.-listed stocks and ETFs, enhanced price execution via IB Smart Routing, and access to our powerful trader workstation, web, mobile, and API trading platforms. In addition, our clients enjoy the lowest cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, fixed income, and more on over 125 markets in 31 countries. Learn more or open an IBKR integrated investment account at IBKR.com. Global news 24 hours a day, on air and at TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in over 120 countries. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. Coronavirus deaths in the U.S. surpass 100. President Trump announcing financial aid for small businesses affected by COVID-19. The Small Business Administration announced disaster loans which provide impacted businesses with up to $2 million. And we've asked Congress to increase the SBA Lending Authority. We're going to be going up to $50 billion and actually much more than that for small businesses, so they'll be helped. Joe Biden's sweeping victories in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona are building his delegate lead over Bernie Sanders in the Democratic presidential race. Our campaign has had a very good night. We've moved closer to securing the Democratic Party's nomination for president. And we're doing it by building a broad coalition that we need to win in November. The head of the DNC and several voting rights groups are calling on states to mail ballots to voters to keep remaining primaries running as the coronavirus pandemic keeps millions of Americans at home. I'm John Trout. Why all the top-tier experts? Because business is not a magic trick. Give us a sense of the economic backdrop. Bloomberg Markets. Which financial records are these? Weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. 
I'm Karen Moscow. U.S. stock index futures are declining along with European shares retracing moves from a day earlier while Treasury yields continue to climb as traders weigh the impact of fiscal and monetary stimulus to counter the effect of the coronavirus. Oil's falling to a 17-year low. Contracts for the S&P 500 are once again hitting their lower trading curbs after the index jumped 6% yesterday. Currently, they're down 92 points. They're down 3.7% now. Dow futures down 821. NASDAQ futures down 328. The DAX in Germany is down 4.8%. Ten-year Treasury down 1 in 132nd. The yield 1.18%. The yield on the two-year 0.49%. And the 30-year yield at 1.81%. NYMEX crude oil is down 5.1% at $1.37 at $25.58 a barrel. COMEX gold down 2.3% down $35.10 at $14.90.70 an ounce. The euro is at 1.1, the British pound 1.20, and the yen 107.38, all against the dollar. And that's a Bloomberg Business Flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Governments are grappling with the coronavirus and how to implement border closures, travel restrictions, and lockdowns that have caused transportation chaos and imperiled economies. European Union leaders agreed to shut down the bloc's external borders for 30 days, while the U.S. and Canada are working on a mutual ban on non-essential travel between the two countries. Around the world, there are at least 193,000 cases of COVID-19, with more than 7,800 deaths. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden won primaries in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona, giving him a huge boost in delegates as he battles Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders for the nomination. Four members of the NBA's Brooklyn Nets, including superstar Kevin Durant, have tested positive for the coronavirus just days after the association halted play to help contain the outbreak. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Okay, Michael, thank you. It's 549 on Wall Street, live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios. This is Bloomberg Daybreak as we get ready for another day of extraordinary volatility in markets. Kriti Gupta joins us now, markets reporter for Bloomberg News. Uh, Kriti, good morning. I don't know if I've said the words limit up, limit down, and circuit breakers more times in my life than I have in the last few weeks. Uh, It seems like this volatility is just not going away anytime soon. That's right. Uh, good morning, Nathan. It is absolutely. It's the same thing we've been hearing for, I think, I want to say a month now. It feels like it feels longer, to be honest. Uh, the same idea, high volatility, low liquidity, and that's still plaguing markets, not just to stocks anymore, but now going into the treasury market, into gold, into oil. It's really just kind of a cross asset story here. Yeah. What does this tell you that the uh, yields on U.S. treasuries now are jumping significantly, especially on the session today? Well, it's interesting because traditionally when you're looking at treasury yields, you're actually, uh, it's supposed to be kind of considered your haven bid, right? Uh, and, but we're not actually seeing that. We did in the first few weeks of those of that market volatility. Now, the treasury market is, is really kind of trading like the stock market or to some extent the bond market uh, or the corporate bond market, excuse me. So something to keep in mind here is that to see treasury yields uh, kind of go back up, it's not necessarily an indicator that we're in the all clear here, um, that that haven bid is, is you know, uh, not working anymore. What it is an indicator of is the fact that liquidity is still in the market. People are usually using the treasury market as a kind of way to get in and out of their positions easily. Like I said, liquidity was an issue in the stock market. So getting in and out of positions is a very big benefit, especially right now when volatility is so high. And, and yesterday's Fed moves, uh, along with that monetary easing, really helped with that. The idea that they're putting a commercial paper facility in to kind of help with that short-term liquidity on the front end, uh, in addition to more repo operations, is, is a very good sign. That could be why you're seeing a yields up today. Yeah, we haven't seen that move from the Fed, those kinds of emergency measures in quite some time. What are you going to be looking for in markets to see something of a return to stability? Well, uh, we've had a million and one recession indicators, right? They were flagging before we even had uh, the virus really start to shut down economic activity here, uh, kind of in the west side, uh, in, in Europe, as in, in New York especially. Uh, something to watch, though, is the oil market. And what's crucial here is that the oil market was kind of that number two punch in the one-two punch that uh, markets had to deal with. Number one being the virus, number two being that oil shock uh, when the Saudis announced a full-out price war and, and the Russians uh 
refused to cooperate with a, with a production cut. So something really to watch here is low oil prices are actually very deflationary for the economy. And if you're already adding that to already slow growth, uh, you kind of have a, a perfect recipe for trouble here. Uh, something to watch, especially in the oil market, is uh, what U.S. shale is doing, what WTI prices are doing. One of the big redeeming qualities of U.S. shale was that WTI came at a discount to Brent. What you want to watch out for is when that discount kind of disappears and WTI trades at a premium to Brent. And what that tells you is that U.S. shale is no longer the cheapest in the world and you're not actually uh, making any money in that. And that actually has broader repercussions, not just for the economy in terms of deflation, but also with the uh, broader credit spreads and then, of course, the, the effects that the credit market has on the economy. Now, what should we be watching for in terms of the economic data as we go forward here? Well, that puts us in a very tricky spot because economic data is not right now indicative of really what's going on in the underlying economy. Uh, the data we're getting before the virus hit is not indicative of, of kind of the current situation because it was before the virus hit and the data during is because of the virus. Afterwards, the economic sh- data will likely show pent up demand. So what do you really watch to get a, a real idea? I think the Chinese data is a really good way to go to kind of get a glimpse into the future of what may hold for the U.S. economy. And uh, not to be too gloomy here, but uh, the U.S. economy actually Actually might suffer even more because at the end of the day, we are the largest consumption economy in the world. So that could actually take a larger a hit and we actually could see a Chinese export data suffer. And then, of course, everything's correlated. So uh, we are in uh, for kind of potentially a global recession. It looks like that's uh, on its way to getting priced in. Yeah, it's certainly the call that a lot of Wall Street banks are talking about now. And I know, Creedy, you talk with a lot of traders on the street. What are they telling you in terms of where they see bottom? Well, it doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon. And and the reason for that, and and that's kind of a hard thing to say after seeing so much volatility and such a major sell-off in these past few weeks, uh, but the bottom does not look super close by right now because right now the main idea here is as long as we see high volatility until we get traders back on the floor, back not working from home, where you do actually have a different environment, uh, a different work-from-home situation, potentially less information as well, uh, that actually means that we could still see some more selling to go. And Kriti Gupta, we'll keep in touch. Thanks as always. Kriti Gupta covers markets for us for Bloomberg News. Karen? All right, Nathan, thank you. It is 554 on Wall Street. It's time for our Bloomberg Daily Law Brief, exploring legal issues in the news. Today we discuss the unprecedented government restrictions being placed on public gatherings to combat the spread of the coronavirus. For more on just how far can social distancing measures go, Bloomberg's Jim Grosso speaks to Lindsay Wiley, a health law professor at Washington College. Lindsay, could the government order all citizens, let's say in New York State, to stay inside? I think that would be absolutely unprecedented, and it would be closely scrutinized by the courts. If there were an order for everyone to stay inside for uh, you know a significant period of time, New Jersey has imposed a curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. It's possible, though, that that could be short-term. There's a lot of concern about preventing large gatherings to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in spite of bars being closed. That's certainly something to watch, though. I heard Governor Cuomo say when asked a question about curfews that the word makes him nervous, probably because he's a lawyer. Curfews have been enforced. How do the courts weigh the pros and the cons? Yeah, I think an important point here is that our constitutional rights are not suspended in an emergency, um, but they're also not absolute. So just like in any kind of routine circumstances, individual rights are balanced against compelling interest in protecting the public's health and safety. So draconian restrictions on personal liberty, a long-term curfew, you know, domestic travel restrictions, any kind of closed borders or road closures that would affect Americans' ability to move from place to place or come outside of their homes would be very closely scrutinized. Really, every aspect of this would be closely examined, including the geographic scope, the time that would be encompassed, you know, how long they would be in effect, as well as any exceptions that would be made and who would be making those decisions and how, because those matters of implementation are um, going to be scrutinized in terms of their impact on due process rights and equal protection rights. So let's talk about curfew for just a minute. Suppose you violate a curfew. Can they fine you? Can they take you to jail? What can they do? I think, you know, obviously the the hope here is for voluntary compliance. I think that's true in any public health situation. Voluntary compliance is, is just more effective because it helps maintain the public's trust. But if you have a rowdy crowd out celebrating St. Patrick's and um, there it becomes large enough to be a concern from a public health standpoint about transmission, 
You, know, you could certainly see um, health officials asking local police uh, to help help ask people to head home. You could see that turning into a confrontation, especially if there's alcohol involved. And in that case, there could be problems in terms of failing to comply with a valid police order. And that's Lindsay Wiley, a health law professor at Washington College, speaking with Bloomberg's June Grasso. Catch more of that interview plus analysis of the latest legal news by subscribing to the Bloomberg Law Podcast or downloading the show at Bloomberg.com slash podcast. And attorneys can find exceptional legal research and business development tools at BloombergLaw.com. Futures this morning are lower with S&P futures down 92 points, Dow futures down 821, NASDAQ futures down 328, the 10-year Treasury down 31 30 seconds the yield 1.18 percent and the yield on the two-year 0.49 percent nymex crude oil is down 6.7 percent on a dollar 82 to 25.12 a barrel and comex gold is down two percent at 14.93.90 an ounce the euro 1.0994 against the dollar and bloomberg daybreak continues this is bloomberg if you love tuning for live breaking news from CNN, MSNBC, Fox, CNBC, and more. But when you can't catch your favorite show as it airs, it might just be a click away as a podcast. Search your favorite news station to explore all the on demand news shows on TuneIn. The puck drops. 12 players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. The world, 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is Bloomberg Radio. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak for Wednesday, March 18th, 2020. Coming up this hour. U.S. futures hit their limit down as volatility remains sky high. The White House pushes a trillion dollar stimulus package to stem the fallout from coronavirus. And Treasury warns unemployment could hit 20% without big government spending. New York Mayor de Blasio considers a shelter-in-place order for the city, but Governor Cuomo pushes back, plus sweeping primary victories for Joe Biden. I'm Michael Bond. More ahead. I'm John Stash, Aaron Sports. Tom Brady leaving New England after 20 years, headed to Tampa Bay. Kevin Durant and three Brooklyn Nets teammates have the coronavirus. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak. On Bloomberg 1130 New York, Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C., Bloomberg 1061 Boston, Bloomberg 960 San Francisco, Sirius XM 119, and around the world on BloombergRadio.com and via the Bloomberg Business app. Good morning, I'm Karen Moscow. And I'm Nathan Hager. Bloomberg Daybreak brought to you by IBKR, the professional's gateway to the world's markets. Their clients enjoy lowest cost access to stocks, options, futures, forex, and fixed income from a single integrated account. Learn more at IBKR.com. U.S. futures are lower after yesterday's rally. 601 on Wall Street, and we check the markets every 15 minutes throughout the trading day on Bloomberg. S&P futures down 92 points. Dow futures down 821. NASDAQ futures down 328. The DAX in Germany is down 4.4%. So is the CAC in Paris. FTSE 100 down 5%. Ten-year Treasury down 29.30 seconds. Yield 1.17%. Yield on the two-year 0.48%. NYMEX crude oil is down 5.8% on $1.56 at 25.39 a barrel. This data check brought to you by Witham, a forward-thinking technology-driven advisory and accounting firm helping clients be in a position of strength in today's modern business landscape. Visit Witham.com to learn more. Nathan. Well, Karen, the wheels are in motion now on a massive stimulus package to offset the fallout from COVID-19. It's going to be big, it's going to be bold, and the uh, level, again, of enthusiasm to get something done Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. President Trump is pushing for more than a trillion dollars in spending to blunt the economic fallout from the virus. We're told the president's aides are receiving alarming information on the impact. In one case, a White House official tells us data from credit card companies show purchases falling off a cliff. And that has Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin moving fast to stem the fallout. We are shutting down parts of this economy, and we're going to use all the tools we have, as I've said, and what tools we don't have, we're going back to Congress. 
Mnuchin warns that without big stimulus, the U.S. unemployment rate could climb to 20 percent. So he's pushing a plan to send payments of $1,000 directly to Americans. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants. Americans need cash now, and the president wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. Mnuchin wants payments sent out by the end of April, followed by another set of checks in four weeks' time, if there's still a national emergency. Investors applauded the move. The S&P 500 finished the day up 6%, but now U.S. futures are lower again, and volatility shows no sign of slowing. But there is an end in sight, according to Barry Sternlicht, CEO of Starwood Capital. I am pretty optimistic that this long slide to oblivion that people are looking at is going to be shorter. And we have to like hold together and act as one, and we're going to be fine. But it's going to be painful. It is World War III for 90 days. The traders appear to be testing exactly where fundamental valuations should be as volatility remains sky high. Right now, the VIX is at 79.9. In Europe, stocks are posting another round of losses after yesterday's modest gains. For the very latest, we bring in Bloomberg's Ewan Potts live from London. Good morning, Ewan. Good morning, Karen and Nathan. A sea of red on traders' Bloomberg screens here in Europe. Every major stock market trading lower with the sell-off worsening in the last hour. Among the worst performing sectors, miners and construction companies. The stock is 100 currently down 3.6%. And as governments attempt to counter the effects of the coronavirus, a possible opening of the door to joint debt issues issuance across the European Union. Germany's Angela Merkel not ruling out the proposal. Live in London, I'm Ewan Potts, Bloomberg Daybreak. Ewan, thank you. Meantime in Asia, an early rally fizzled overnight as sentiment turned sour. Here with details is Bloomberg's Juliet Sally in our Singapore Bureau. Good morning, Juliet. Good morning, Nathan. The topics in Japan closed virtually unchanged, while the Nikkei was down 1.7% after earlier rising more than 4%. In Australia, the ASX 200 fell 6.4 percent and the Aussie fell below 60 cents for the first time in 17 years. In Seoul, the Kospi closed at a 10-year low at 1,591 points, while Hong Kong stocks were sold off in late trade amid reports of further travel restrictions there and ahead of 10 cents earnings. China's CSI 300 closed down 2 percent, helping Asian equities notch up a sixth session of losses to remain at four-year lows. In Singapore, I'm Juliet Sali, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Juliet, thank you. Back here in the U.S., the impact from the outbreak is being felt everywhere. We have Bloomberg team coverage on the fallout now, beginning in New York with Bloomberg's Jeff Bellinger. The largest mass transit provider in the country is asking the federal government for $4 billion in aid. New York's MTA says the coronavirus has decimated revenue. In New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy is asking the White House for funds to expand hospital capacity. He says the state's 2,000 intensive care beds are a fraction of what is needed and could lead to hospitals denying life-saving care to patients. I'm Jeff Bellinger in New York. Now here's Martin DeCaro from our Bloomberg 991 newsroom in Washington. The White House is ordering federal employees to limit personal contact, though some exceptions may be made for law enforcement and criminal justice workers. The government plans to maximize the use of telework, saying non-mission critical services should be scaled back. Meantime, West Virginia has reported its first case of the virus. This confirms the infection spread to all 50 states. I'm Martin DeCaro in Washington. Now here's Greg Jarrett from our Bloomberg 960 newsroom in San Francisco. This city is mostly a ghost town. While many adhered to the shelter in place, some still scoffed, but they're in the minority. In Washington, a couple in their 80s are the first to die in Clark County, just north of Portland, Oregon. There are now 50 people who've died from the coronavirus in Washington. Authorities in Multnomah County, which encompasses most of Portland, have announced they will be opening hundreds of new shelter beds in public buildings throughout the city to try and stem the spread of the coronavirus in the homeless community. In San Francisco, I'm Greg Jarrett, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Greg, thank you. And S&P futures are down 92 points this morning. Dow futures down 821 and NASDAQ futures down 328. Ten-year Treasury down 24.30 seconds. Yield 1.15%. Yield on the two-year 0.47%. And straight ahead, we have the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. All right, Karen, thank you. It's 6.07 on Wall Street, and Michael Barr is here with more on what's going on around the world. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Nathan. Here in New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio says he is considering a shelter-in-place order for its nearly 9 million residents. We are preparing for an onslaught, and it's coming very, very fast. However, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed back on a shelter-in-place idea. I don't even think you can do a statewide policy, right? 
Uh, and I'm working on coordinated policies with the surrounding states. So I worked with New Jersey, Connecticut. We're now working with Pennsylvania. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't work. For example, we just closed the bars in New York. If I just closed the bars and restaurants in New York, everybody would get in a car and drive to New Jersey, right? And then they'd come back home, drive back to New York after being in a bar, <laughs> which isn't the best idea. Cuomo reiterated that a shelter in place cannot be done without the state's permission and that there is no consideration of issuing one. So far, the number of cases of COVID-19 in New York City is at 923 with 10 deaths. In New Jersey, there are 267 cases with three deaths. Joe Biden's sweeping victories in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona are building his delegate lead over rival Bernie Sanders in the Democratic presidential race. Speaking from his home in Wilmington, Delaware, the former vice president focused on the importance of fighting the COVID-19 outbreak in the U.S. Tackling this pandemic is a national emergency akin to fighting a war. And it's going to require leadership and cooperation from every level of government. And it's going to require us to move thoughtfully and decisively to quickly address both the public health crisis as well as the economic crisis. Biden also told Sanders supporters that he and the Vermont senator have a similar outlook for the future of America. New York's MTA is seeking $4 billion from the federal government as the coronavirus has decimated ridership and revenue. Pat Foy, the agency's chief executive officer, said in a letter to the state's congressional delegation, the MTA is now facing a financial calamity. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. All right, Michael, thank you. It is 6.09 on Wall Street, and now it's time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stanshower. Nathan, St. Patrick's Day, normally one for celebration in Boston, but this year many of the bars were closed, and it was the day a legend left town. The day began with the Tom Brady tweet, thanking Patriots fans for their support the last 20 years, and later we learned his destination, Tampa Bay. So he goes from a team where he won six Super Bowls, led to the playoffs 18 times, to the NFL team with the worst overall record, who haven't been to the playoffs in four 14 years. It was a move many saw coming. Brady doesn't say much about these things, but there were hints he was unhappy with being underpaid, tired of Bill Belichick's demanding ways, perhaps not thrilled with the declining talent level on the Pats, and he felt it was time for a change. Not the only quarterback in one place a long time, and now moving on. Philip Rivers, 16 years a Charger, will sign a one-year deal with Indianapolis. Kevin Durant has the coronavirus. So do three of his Brooklyn Nets teammates. Their identity is not known. Three of the four have not shown any symptoms. Durant told The Athletic that he feels fine. A player from the Ottawa Senators has tested positive, and so has a second Yankee minor leaguer. The latest sporting event to get postponed, the PGA Championship. It was to be played in San Francisco in May. They will try to play it later in the year. The Masters is going to try and find another date as well. The International Olympic Committee insists the summer games for late July in Tokyo are still on as planned. With the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update, I'm John Stashower. Nathan? Well, of course, a number of other sporting events have been canceled around the world, and that means the TV networks that had planned to air them are bracing for a big financial hit. Bloomberg Intelligence estimates almost $700 million of ads will be at risk for Disney should the suspended NBA season be canceled. And Turner has nearly $960 million of ads up in the air. It was scheduled to air NBA playoff games as well as the NCAA Final Four and Championship games. S&P futures lower by 92 points. Dow futures down 821. NASDAQ futures down 328. Ten years down 24. 30 seconds yield 1.15%. Two-year treasury yield 0.47%. And you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. Imagine... Imagine being denied an apartment because of your religion, or your race, or because you have children, or a disability. It's so wrong. Yes, but who has the power to stop this? You do. Each of us has the power. The law is on your side. It's illegal for landlords to discriminate because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, disability, or familial status. If you suspect that you have experienced housing discrimination, file a complaint with HUD immediately so we can investigate it. Fair housing is your right. Use it. To learn more, 
Visit HUD.gov slash fair housing. That's HUD.gov slash fair housing. Or call 1-800-669-9777. 1-800-669-9777. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing for a highly personalized experience? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's fast-paced environment, where the only constants are change and volatility, you need a prime broker who's both steady and agile, focused on supporting your needs so that you can focus on growing your business and producing results. Exceptional client service and advocating for our clients is at the core of what we do. Our award-winning high-touch team is just one of the benefits of working with BNY Mellon. We help alternative investment managers create great experiences for their clients. Whether it's customized financing, securities lending solutions, platform access, or outsourced trading, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and dedicated to meeting your evolving demands. To learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers, visit Pershing.com. Pershing LLC. Member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Are you curious what others are listening to on TuneIn? Head to the trending section under Browse to see the most popular stations and podcasts among TuneIn listeners right now. Check it out. You might just discover something new for yourself. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, I'll talk with the author of a fictional story about a global pandemic that right now feels all too real. All I did was just drew upon the trends. You know, I just extended them. Unfortunately, real life seems to have outraced even some of my imagination. Lawrence Wright joins me on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. TuneIn brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most. On TuneIn. Com slash terms. Please don't text and drive. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then try Babbel for free by texting EXPLORE to 64000. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the space repetition method in just 10 to 15 minutes a day you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence with Babbel, you can speak a language. Just text EXPLORE to 64000 and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or text EXPLORE to 64000 and try it for free. Text E-X-P-L-O-R-E to 64000. If morning is not your favorite part of the day, then maybe you're not listening. We finally start to make a move. Tom Keen. What would you expect from Bezos next? Jonathan Farrow. How uncomfortable should central banks be with this situation? Morning should be good for you. We had no idea where this would head on that morning after. Bloomberg Surveillance. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio, the Bloomberg Business App, and BloombergRadio.com. Bloomberg, the world is listening. In the world of financial advice, speed, clarity, and foresight aren't just nice to have. They're required to survive. Adipar provides advisors the real-time portfolio reporting and insights required to realize the goals and personal potential for their clients. Trusted by thousands of wealth advisors from family offices, RIAs, and large financial institutions, Adipar helps you make better, more informed investment decisions. To learn more, visit us at addepar.com. Influential conversations from Bloomberg Television. Here's Emily Chang. Big tech is uniting to help fight misinformation on the coronavirus online. Earlier, I spoke with Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg about how they're handling this unprecedented situation and what impact they're seeing from the outbreak. We're responding to this with all hands on deck. We are taking down any harmful misinformation on the coronavirus. We're working with WHO very closely and directly, taking down things they think are harmful right away, working with local health ministries. We're trying to get good information out to people 
Tom, my fiance, and I, we just did Asked by the WHO Director a hand-washing video, and we're asking celebrities across Facebook and Instagram, anyone with a big following, to share good information. So it's about taking down the bad and about getting out the good. We're also partnering with the UN Foundation and the WHO to launch a COVID response fund for them. We have a $10 million match. We've already raised $3 million on Facebook. And we're going to do our match whether or not we hit it, but we really hope people will jump in. And we're going to do the same for the CDC coming very soon. So this is about taking down the bad information, but also getting the good information and support out to people and to these incredible organizations. Hear more interviews like this one on Bloomberg Television, streaming live on Bloomberg.com and on the Bloomberg mobile app. Or check your local cable listings, markets, headlines, and breaking news 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, the Bloomberg Business app, and on Quick Take by Bloomberg. This is a Bloomberg Business Flash. And I'm Karen Moscow. European sovereign bonds are leading a global route as markets brace for the kind of supply surge not seen for years after nations from the U.K. to France and Italy unveiled plans to spend their way out of the coronavirus crisis. Investors are pricing in the risk of a surge in government borrowing to fund stimulus and in offsetting the economic shock from the pandemic. Italian 10-year yields jumped as much as 64 basis points, while those on German 30-year debt surged back above 0%. Right now, the 10-year Treasury is down 18 30 seconds. The yield is at 1.13 percent while the yield on the two-year is at 0.47 percent and the 30-year yield 1.71 percent contracts for the s&p 500 once again hit their lower trading curves after the index jumped six percent yesterday right now s&p futures are down 92 points dow futures are down 821 nasdaq futures down 328 the dax in germany is down 4.7 percent nymex crude oil is down 5.8% 5.8 percent on a dollar 56 to 25.39 a barrel. Comex gold is down nine tenths percent or 13 dollars 20 cents at 15.12 60 an ounce. The euro is at 1.1011 against the dollar. British pound 1.2028 and the yen 107.12. And that's a Bloomberg business flash. Now here's Michael Barr with more on what's going on around the world. Michael. Karen, cases of coronavirus worldwide are close to 193,000 with more than 7,800 deaths. In the U.S., 104 people have died from COVID-19. Meanwhile, the U.S. and Canadian governments are poised to announce as soon as today that they will halt non-essential and non-business travel between the countries, according to two officials familiar with the talks. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden is the big winner in Arizona, Florida, and Illinois. Biden's quest for his party's nomination now seems well in reach with a 284-delegate lead over rival Bernie Sanders. Four members of the NBA's Brooklyn Nets, including superstar Kevin Durant, have tested positive for the coronavirus. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on Quick Take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg, Nathan. All right, Michael, thanks very much. It's 619 on Wall Street. Live from the Bloomberg Interactive Brokers Studios, this is Bloomberg Daybreak. Our next guest this morning is Stephen Gallo, head of European FX strategy at BMO Capital Markets. It's interesting to hear this morning, uh, Stephen, that uh, Angela Merkel is now signaling that uh, she may be open to ending her resistance toward joint European Union debt issuance. It seems as though government borrowing to pay for these massive stimulus measures that are being considered uh, has the market's attention. How could it play out in currency markets? Well, in currency markets, I think most things have been overtaken by um, funding stress. Uh, So what we saw yesterday uh, in particular uh, is a lot of pressure in term unsecured funding uh, for dollars. Uh, This included and was in some cases concentrated in the uh, developed market space in in Europe. we haven't seen an increase in that today. In fact, if anything, things have dissipated. There was large take up at the ECB's um, first big auction of dollar liquidity, uh, given the Fed swap lines. Um, so the second order uh, stress uh, onto the banking system in, in Europe has been limited. But where I think uh, attention needs to be concentrated. Uh, is in the EM space. Uh, f- funding conditions here um, are, are, are probably going to be quite severe. There, there, there's obviously a totem totem pole, uh, so some EMs are riskier than others. 
uh, in terms of their external financing needs. But this is one of the main things driving FX now. Um, and, and, and certainly it does look like the dollar is trading with a positive relationship to this funding stress. So in other words, a pickup in funding stress is being treated at the, for the time being as, uh, as dollar positive and, and vice versa. Um, but this doesn't change. You know, nothing changes in, in, in the broader picture right now. Still, it seems very much that liquidation of financial and physical assets uh, like, like metals is trumping everything else so that um, uh, demand for hard currency, particularly dollars, can be met. Is there anything in an extraordinary situation like this that can be done to bolster emerging market currencies? Oh, that's uh, you know. I think I think in that in that case, the the negatives outweigh the positives for the EM space as a whole. Uh, in particular, because uh, over the last decade or so, give or take, the big run up in in debt, in private debt, uh, and you know, foreign currency debt has has been in the EM space. So, depending on how all this plays out, uh, in terms of how long the outbreak lasts for, lasts for in, in the developed world, um, and, and what the ramifications are for global growth, we could be at the outset of a, of a protracted period of EMD leveraging. So once we get through the funding stress, which we're clearly very much in now, then the question is, okay, policy responses in EM, yes, we'll have to digest those, whatever they are, but runway and policy space is more limited in, in EM, uh, and you have this date deleveraging issue, you have this run-up in, in debt issue, which still has to be resolved, I think. With the dollar strengthening the way it is, what does that mean for the prospects of of some kind of recovery happening anytime soon. I mean, doesn't that make it more difficult to recover from a potential global recession? You mean for the U.S. with the dollar, with, with the dollar strengthening or, or simply with, with dollar strengthening vis-a-vis the rest of the world? Vis-a-vis well, the rest well, of the world in our last 30 seconds here. So, so certainly, I, I, I think it complicates factors, but, but this is what the situation we're left with. The dollar is the linchpin of the global monetary system. Uh, it is in relatively short supply. Dollar scarcity was an issue even before COVID-19 uh, became an issue. Uh, and, and, and the level of, of foreign currency debt, particularly in dollars, is, is high in, in the EM space. And, and so this is the situation we're left with. There's no easy way out of this. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks so much for your insights this morning, Stephen. Much appreciated. Stephen Gallo is head of European FX strategy at BMO Capital Markets. And just taking a look at currencies on the session, seeing a bit of uh, euro strengthening this morning at 1.10 against the dollar. The British pound is weaker at 1.2024 against the dollar. And the yen uh, seeing some strengthening there at 107.11. Futures in the equity markets are limit down this morning. S&P futures down 92. Dow futures down 821 points. NASDAQ futures lower by 328. Ten-year is down. The yield at uh, 1.12 percent. And you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Stocks rallied yesterday with the broader market up 6 percent on news the Trump administration was moving toward a big fiscal stimulus package. But there's a lot of uncertainty out there amid the coronavirus pandemic. And the futures slid this morning. They hit their limit down to prevent further losses. Oil is also continuing to slide on worries about demand. Lower by more than 6% again this morning, almost down to $25 a barrel. Overseas European markets are sliding. Asian markets fell today. American produce growers preparing to harvest crops are warning of a devastating impact on fruit and vegetables after the U.S. Embassy in Mexico announced a halt to visa interviews for seasonal farm workers amid widespread travel restrictions due to the coronavirus outbreak. Large grain and soybean operations in the U.S. don't rely as much on seasonal workers, but many fruit and vegetable operators do. Gina Cervetti, Bloomberg Radio. Vatsal Shah is Senior Project Engineer at Mott McDonald, a global engineering consultancy with more than 16,000 employees. He earned his Ph.D. at New Jersey Institute of Technology and as an adjunct professor is helping NJIT students explore emerging technologies. My focus is renewable markets, emerging technologies, the idea of floating cities. 
What are we doing to develop that? What will happen to it in the water? We're going to have waves hitting it. You're going to have solar. How are you going to you know, develop plants? How are you going to develop vegetation and farming? That sort of thought process happens at NGIT. We actually plan out what will the city look like? How do we develop that? So in 10 years, we're actually ready to take on those challenges when we have our first development in the water. NGIT also has been doing a lot of work in self-healing materials. So taking the polymers and the, the new material that we have in our material sciences departments and putting them into things like concrete, things like steel, reinforcing our soil. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu. In case you didn't know, TuneIn lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio, except you can hear them from anywhere. If you want to find a station from somewhere else in the world, navigate to the By Location section under Browse. Keep exploring with TuneIn. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on Tune In. This week on the New Yorker Radio Hour, I'll talk with the author of a fictional story about a global pandemic that right now feels all too real. All I did was just drew upon the trends. You know, I just extended them. Unfortunately, real life seems to have outraced even some of my imagination. Lawrence Wright joins me on the New Yorker Radio Hour from WNYC Studios. Listen to this episode on TuneIn today. To launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their business strategically. Yet, the most competitive managers in the market know, with the right partner and a flexible operating platform, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. In-depth analysis, consult reporting need to know global business news around the world and across the markets bloomberg connects the dots for decision makers stay on top of today's headlines follow big breakthroughs in tech understand the latest political issues see how the world's wealthiest are spending their money track what's happening in the markets and much more subscribe today to bloomberg the global standard for business reporting get it all at bloomberg.com slash subscriptions Experts like to be part of Bloomberg Surveillance. What does the new Europe look like? For the same reason we're recommending it to you. Everything you thought would happen is happening. Weekday mornings at 7 Eastern on Bloomberg Radio. Bloomberg, the world is listening. Broadcasting live from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York. Bloomberg 1130 to Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 991 to Boston. Bloomberg 1061 to San Francisco. Bloomberg 960 to the country. Sirius XM Channel 119. And around the globe, the Bloomberg Business App and BloombergRadio.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And it's 630 on Wall Street. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. We are just about three hours away from the opening of U.S. trading. Let's get you up to date on the news you need to know at this hour. U.S. futures have hit limit down levels as volatility remains sky high. Excitement over stimulus from the White House appears to be fading despite the promise of big spending. It's going to be big and it's going to be bold. And the uh, level, again, of enthusiasm to get something done, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. Now, President Trump is pushing for more than a trillion dollars in stimulus to blunt the economic fallout from the virus. As part of the plan, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin wants to send payments of $1,000 directly to Americans. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants. Americans need cash now, and the president wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. Now, Mnuchin warns without big spending, the U.S. unemployment rate could climb to 20 percent. 
Meantime, in Europe, we're seeing signs that governments may band together to stem the fallout from the outbreak. We get the very latest from Bloomberg's Maria Tadeo in Brussels. Euro area leaders are considering now issuing joint debt on the fact that Angela Merkel is now saying, look, I'm not just going to rule it out completely. Let's explore it as actually a game changer. It's huge for Europe. This was always a red line. They have not been in favor of more risk sharing. The fact that Angela Merkel is not ruling this out now really shows you that, A, this situation is probably very serious. You're not just looking at a recession, but probably a very deep, long recession for Europe. And then two, that no single country is going to be able to deal with it by itself. There are now more than 30,000 infections in Italy. Spain is more than 10,000. France and Germany have about 8,000 each. Back here in the U.S., infections have climbed past 5,800, while deaths from the coronavirus have eclipsed 100. Retailers from Neiman Marcus to Bergdorf Goodman are closing stores, and Nevada's governor is shutting all Las Vegas casinos. Worldwide cases of the virus are now approaching 200,000. Now let's get you up to date on how stocks are faring. We check the markets every 15 minutes. Throughout the trading day on Bloomberg, and S&P futures are down 92 points. Dow futures down 821, and Nasdaq futures down 328. The DAX in Germany is down 5.1 percent. Ten-year Treasury down 12.30 seconds, yield 1.11 percent, and the yield on the two-year 0.48 percent. NYMEX crude oil is down six and a half percent on a dollar 76 at 25.19 a barrel. COMEX gold is down 1.3 percent on 19 dollars 80 cents at 15.06 an ounce. The euro 1.1013 against the dollar and the yen 107.17. Straight ahead, the latest world and national news. And this is Bloomberg. Thanks, Karen. 633 on Wall Street. And this news update is brought to you by Land Rover. The only adventure sales event is happening now until March 31st. Visit your tri-state area Land Rover retailer for details on the new Discovery Sport. Land Rover, above and beyond. Here's Michael Barr. Thank you very much, Nathan. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio insists a shelter-in-place order is still an option in light of the coronavirus. I believe that decision should be made in the next 48 hours. And it's a very, very difficult decision. However, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo pushed back on the idea. My job is to make sure that the state has a coordinated plan and it works everywhere. Uh, I don't think shelter in place uh, really works for one locality. I'm a New York City boy, um, born and raised, if you can't tell. And uh, we're very good at getting around the rules. You know, you say shelter in place if if you stay in New York City. I'll go stay with my sister in Westchester, right? I'll go stay with a buddy in in the neighboring suburb of Nassau. While de Blasio said he wouldn't coordinate with the state, that he would coordinate with the state, Cuomo says that he alone has the authority to order shelters in place and has no plans to do so. An NYPD officer has tested positive for COVID-19 and 17 of his colleagues are ill in relation to the virus. Department officials say the officers are out of the first precinct. So far, the number of cases of coronavirus in New York City is at 923 with 10 deaths. In New Jersey, there are 267 cases with three deaths. With the coronavirus spreading at an alarming rate, California is preparing to deal with worst-case scenarios that could overwhelm hospitals and drain the state's spending reserves. Governor Gavin Newsom says that he is putting the California National Guard on alert for duties, such as ensuring food distribution. Former Vice President Joe Biden won all three Democratic primaries up for grabs yesterday. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the story. Biden's domination of the race in South Carolina has put him in a glide path to the nomination. It puts Bernie Sanders in a huge mathematical hole to even think about getting enough delegates to win. As impressive as a sweep is the margin by which Biden won in Florida with nearly triple the votes and Illinois with almost double. Arizona, a double-digit lead. Biden talking unity now. Let me say especially to the young voters who have been inspired by Senator Sanders, I hear you. I know what's at stake. I know what we have to do. Biden says he needs to unify the party to beat Donald Trump and unify the country. In San Francisco, I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. Global News, 24 hours a day, on air and on quick take by Bloomberg, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts from more than 120 countries. I'm Michael Barr. This is Bloomberg. Nathan. Hi, Michael. Thanks. It's just before 636 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. Nathan, it is going to be a very strange sight. Tom Brady in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform after 20 years in New England, quarterbacking a dynasty, played in nine. 
nine Super Bowls. He won six. He won 17 division titles. And now he's going to the Bucks, who have the worst overall one-loss record of any team in the NFL. They haven't been to the playoffs since 2007. But they needed a QB. They've been moved on from Jameis Winston. Their coach, Bruce Arians, is well-regarded. They've got good receivers. And now we're going to learn a little about something that has fascinated people for years. Can Brady win without Bill Belichick? Can Belichick win without Brady? The only QB the Pats have now is Jared Stidham, who was a backup last year as a rookie. They'll need someone else. Winston's available, and so too is Cam Newton. The Panthers have told the 2015 NFL MVP to seek a trade. They're about to finalize the deal with free agent QB Teddy Bridgewater. Phillip Rivers, a charger for 16 years, now going to Indianapolis. The Jets re-signed free agent guard Alex Lewis. Word is the Giants' pursuit of free agent pass rusher Javion Clowney has ended. Four Brooklyn Nets players tested positive for coronavirus. The only one identified, Kevin Durant. He told the Athletic he feels fine. Three of the four not showing symptoms. No word of any Knicks with the virus. They played recent games against Utah and Detroit, who both have players with it. A second Yankee minor leaguer tested positive. It's not known if, like the first, he did not have any contact with the major league players. We're at the Bloomberg NBC Sports Update. I'm John Stanley. Nathan? All right, John, thanks. It's 637 on Wall Street. The following commentary is from Bloomberg Opinion. Give Boeing the bailout it doesn't deserve. I'm Brooke Sutherland, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Boeing has reportedly asked the White House for short-term aid for itself, suppliers, and airlines as coronavirus-related shutdowns bring travel to a near standstill. Boeing certainly needs the cash, the now one-year grounding of its 737 MAX jet following two fatal crashes has left it reliant on wide-body models for which demand is cratering. But while President Trump explained a developing White House plan to backstop airlines by pointing out their current challenges were, quote, not their fault, the same can hardly be said of Boeing. Wide-scale layoffs at Boeing would be devastating to the U.S. economy. It's a situation the federal government should do everything in its power to prevent. That doesn't make it any easier to stomach the idea that a company responsible for so recently killing 346 people will be handed a chunk of government cash. Just as there are no atheists in foxholes, there are precious few saints in government bailouts. I'm Brooke Sutherland. For more opinion, visit Bloomberg.com or O-P-I-N Go on the Bloomberg Terminal. This has been Bloomberg Opinion. And Bloomberg Opinion commentaries can be heard every weekday at this time. Terminal customers can read more at O-P-I-N Go. It is just before 639 on Wall Street. Time for the Bloomberg Small Business Report. Here's John Tucker. Final action on a virus relief measure in the U.S. may be delayed, but small businesses need relief, and they need it fast. You don't have to be an economic genius uh, to see what's happening around you in terms of uh, these now forced closures of uh, businesses. The economist David Rosenberg argues for a stimulus package right now of at least $1 trillion. We're, we're shutting down colleges around the country. Uh, students are going home. What about all these ma and pa shops that are either restaurants or bars uh, or other um, retail outlets that cater to students? Uh, I mean, they're going to need uh, to get some sort of relief or they're going to go bankrupt. And that's just one part of the U.S. economy. Rosenberg says the U.S. is already in recession. Bloomberg strategist Gina Martin.